हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज मिनी सेठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टे हेल्दी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक बॉस लोपर सेमुलसन थियरम दिस थियरम बेसिकली टेल अस हाउ चेंज इन प्राइज ऑफ गुड्स इफेक्ट द प्राइज ऑफ फैक्टर विच यूज इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ गुड दिस थियरम बेसिकली टेल अस हाउ चेंज इन प्राइज ऑफ गुड्स इफेक्ट द प्राइज ऑफ फैक्टर विच यूज इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ गुड एज वी नो वी मेनली यूज टू फैक्टर्स फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग any good one is capital other one is labor and capital receive interest as a return or we can say that price of capital is interest rate and labor receive wage as a return for example goods a is capital intensive good means for producing a good we mostly use capital or we can say that for producing a good we 80% use capital and 20% use labor now suppose price of a increase as price of a increase, increase means a uh, profit of business increase obviously now they are receiving more money as profit of business increase they increase production as they increase production they create more demand for capital because goods a is capital intensive goods for producing a they need more capital that's why they create more demand for capital as demand of capital increase interest rate increase because interest rate is price of capital so we can say that how change in price Price of goods affect the price of factor which is used in production of goods. Now we will understand this theorem with the help of this Edgeworth box diagram. Here we are taking example of country X. Country X has abundant of labor but scarcity of capital. Country X has abundant of labor but scarcity of capital. That's why country X can produce labor intensive goods at lower cost but capital intensive goods at higher cost. And country X is producing two goods. One is steel, other one is cloth. steel is capital intensive goods mean for production of steel we need more capital on the other hand cloth is labor intensive goods for production of cloth we need more labor in this diagram on horizontal side on x axis on ab and dc we have labor and vertical side on bc and ad we have capital so a C is our this A C this red one is our contract curve. R is before trade point when country are not doing any international trade. As we discussed earlier, country is producing two goods. One is steel and other one is cloth. So this X zero is isoquant for cloth and Y zero is isoquant for steel. This P zero is P zero is this dotted red one. P zero P zero is our price line and this. AR this AR dotted line represent capital labor ratio for cloth means how much capital labor we are using in the production of cloth is represented by AR dotted line on the other hand this RC dotted line represent capital labor ratio for steel means how much capital or labor we are using in the production of steel it represented by this RC line now country x start international trade as we earlier discussed country x can produce labor intensive goods at lower cost but capital intensive goods at higher cost that's why after trade country increase the production of labor intensive goods and start doing export of labor intensive goods on the other hand reduce the production of capital intensive goods and start doing import of capital intensive goods so steel is capital intensive good so country x reduce the production of steel and start doing import of steel on the other hand cloth is a labor intensive good country x increase the production of cloth and start doing export of cloth so after trade equilibrium point is s this x1 x1 is isoquant of cloth this y1 y1 is isoquant of steel this p1 p1 is price line you can see after trade capital labor ratio of cloth is a s before trade capital labor ratio of cloth was ar you can see here as line is bigger than ar which showing after trade country x has increased the production of cloth on the other hand this sc line shows after trade capital labor ratio of steel before trade capital labor ratio of steel was rc 
after trade capital labor ratio of steel is SC. You can see the SC line is smaller than RS, which is showing after trade country X has reduced the production of steel. Now suppose due to tariff or any other reason price of cloth has increased as price of cloth increase means profit of business increase obviously now they are receiving more money as profit of business increase they increase more production of cloth as production of cloth increase means demand for labor increase because cloth is labor intensive goods for producing cloth they need more labor a demand for labor increase means wage rate increase. In this diagram, you can see this P1, P1 line is steep than P0, P0 line, which shows wage rate of labor has increased as compared to interest on capital. So, we can say that this theorem basically tells us how change in price of goods can change the price of factor which use production of goods. So in order to clearly understand this theorem, we are going to talk about one more diagram. This diagram is same as we earlier discussed. We mainly talk about this diagram. In this diagram on x-axis we have cloth and y-axis we have steel. This black one A is production possibility curve. R is before trade point when country are not doing international trade and P0 is before trade price line. At this R point country is producing OC quantities of cloth and OS quantities of steel. As international trade start country move from R to S point. At this S point country reduce quantities of steel from OS to S1 but increase quantities of cloth from OC to OC1 and P1 is new price line. You can see here as a production of cloth increase, export of cloth increase, all resources from steel industry is moving in cloth industry. And second thing as production, price and export of cloth increase means there is more demand of labor because cloth is a labor intensive good. For production of cloth, we need more labor. There is more demand of labor but less demand of capital. As a result, a wage rate increase and interested fall. So, this is all about Sloper-Samuelson theorem. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.